Greetings guys, gals, and non-binary pals. Today it is Monday and that means I'm going to sit down and talk to you about something that I find quite important that is weighing on my mind in a bit more detail than I can do over on TikTok. Today I want to talk about how to respond to ignorant people because I get a lot of comments on my TikToks from ignorant people and there are some stock standard things that a lot of people say and I end up with a lot of people fighting in my comments and no one ever coming to a, an agreement. It's just lots of people yelling. And then there are so many misogynistic, ignorant people who make TikToks talking about feminists and hating feminists and women and all that sort of thing. And I just want to talk about the best way to approach these people and respond to these people because I see a lot of people who respond quite ineffectively. And I just want to talk about the ways that I find to be the most effective. In the past just few days, I've had quite a few men who have been fighting me and trying to argue with me, apologize and admit that they're wrong because you just kind of catch them off guard. So I want to talk about how I do that and how to get through in the best way possible. Um, I'm starting with a base because I tried filming this before and then I just dissociated. So... <laughs> I started uh, doing my makeup and then just like stared off into space for a solid 10 minutes. And so I just want to start again. So we've got a base. Uh, I just also want to say that the reason I do my makeup while I'm talking about this is because I get really distracted and find it really easy to go off on tangents and not know what I'm talking about anymore. And by, by doing something and focusing on something, it really helps me focus on what I'm talking about and staying on task. So... That's why I do my makeup while I'm talking. So one of the most common responses is when you talk about things and you're like, men do this. You get a lot of people saying not all men. So I just want to say initially when you're talking about men, specify to some degree, you know, sort of like I'll always say something like the men who do this. Then if men come and say not all men, you can just say, I didn't say all men, I specifically said this group of men. And if you're getting defensive, then you are included in that group. And they typically will not respond to that or they'll reply with, oh, you know? So although it is men overall, and it is a problem that, you know, men are doing this because women aren't typically included in that. It is an issue that men do. They do get defensive and say that you're attacking all men, which I mean, we know isn't true. But if you can just counter that straight away by saying, well, I specified not all men, they lose any ground to be mad at you about that. So that's number one. <laughs> you can also acknowledge that and say, you are aware that it's not all men and you didn't mean for it to come across as all men. There are good men out there. However, if they're getting defensive over this topic, it implies that they are one of the men who this applies to. And that again, disarms them. They're expecting you to get kind of mad in response. The overall theme really is that a lot of men who come onto feminist posts and comment things to negate you, they're all just trying to bait you. Really, that's all they're doing. They, they expect a fight. They expect a screaming match. They're going to come on and comment something super ignorant and they expect you to come back and yell at them, you know, and then they're going to go away and say, women hate men, feminists are all the same, they're all angry, they don't have any valid points. You can't give them that. I know it's really tempting to just yell at them because, you know, we're so, we're angry and we have every right to be angry. However, they aren't going to respond well to that and they're going to use that against you, which is terrible and it's really frustrating, but that's what they're going to do. And I don't know about you, but I don't want to give into the trap that they are laying for me. So the best way I find is since they aren't expecting you to calmly talk to them, they often don't actually have very many counterpoints. So if, if you talk about something like, let's say I will make a video talking about how women get abused and the rate at which they're abused, you'll get men commenting something like, men get abused too and they kind of expect you to to yell at them and say that's not what we're talking about right now shut up women get abused more that sort of thing which is so tempting to do but you just you need to validate them 
because if you're invalidating them and just yelling at them, they're going to feel attacked and not listen to anything you have to say. If everyone is attacking everyone, no one's going to listen to anyone and no one gets anywhere. The most important part of arguing and debating is that you have to validate each other. Otherwise, it just ends up being so ineffective and just a screaming match. That's the first thing I learned in therapy is you have to, you have to validate people. Otherwise, no one listens. Absolutely no one listens at all. Even if you don't agree with where they're coming from, you have to validate their point which is so tricky i understand completely but unfortunately that's the way it goes so you always need to say like yes and rather than yes but because if you say but you are automatically just invalidating every point they say but invalidates anything you say before but and that is just the way it goes so you want to say and instead so when a man says something like men get abused too, you want to reply with yes, I know men get abused too. And we'll talk about that because it is an issue. We just aren't talking about that right now. I understand where you're coming from and I know that this is a problem. It's just not what we're talking about at this moment. Is there any way for them to argue that? Really, if they argue that, do they really have a leg to stand on? I don't think so. So if a man comments something like, men get abused too, I find the best way to respond to that is something along the lines of, yes, men get abused too, and that is a big issue. We aren't talking about that right now. However, if you make a video or your own post about it, let me know and I will personally go on to it and show my full support. How are they going to respond to that? You know, like you're giving them a complete option. You're like, I will support you in talking about issues that men face. I will 100% support you. But they're not going to do it, are they? Because they don't actually care. And you're calling them out for that. And I personally don't, I haven't seen anyone, I haven't seen anyone be able to respond to that yet. They usually just ignore me or delete their comment when I reply with something like that. <laughs> because you're disarming the idea that we don't care about men. That's their main point is they, they say women don't care about men. Feminists don't care about men. So if you tell them you'll support them and their advocacy for men's issues, they can't claim that. I will often receive comments saying men are oppressed too. And that is infuriating because that is so untrue <laughs> and I always say the response to this looks terrifying uh I think the best response to that is initially ask them how instead of just yelling at them saying that's untrue how dare you uh ask them how and oftentimes they'll explain issues like toxic masculinity and one I see that comes up a lot is like along the lines of the, the main issue they bring up is custody fights and how children always will often go to the mother uh, even if they're an unfit mother and they would do better with the father and that is a very valid that's a very valid issue and I understand how they would think that's men being oppressed and I see a lot of people getting really angry and yelling back about that. Like I've seen people say that's because women birth the child and that's not a valid response at all. That's not a valid response. That is a big issue. Um, children being placed with mothers, even though the mothers are unfit and fathers losing custody of children when they don't deserve it. That is an, that is an issue. And it's a patriarchal issue because it's been placed upon women that we are the primary caregivers. And that needs to change. Like we we need to change. We put roles, we put gender roles, right? The, they're all enforced by the patriarchy. The idea of women having to be caregivers is is not, it's not true. It's old fashioned and we need to change that. And that is a feminist issue. We need, we wanna take that away from women and give both parents equal responsibility for their children and thus, in court and custody cases, the fight will be more fair. I completely agree it's unfair that children often end up with mothers, even if that's not where they wanna go, even if the mothers don't deserve that. That is a huge issue. You are 100% right. 
there's no fighting that. That's true. But it's not the oppression of men that causes that. It's the oppression of women that causes that. Because women have been told that their role is to look after children and not work. Whereas men's role is to work and not look after children. We need to remove that. And that's a feminist issue. Again, haven't really seen many men able to respond to that. <laughs> because... Because we can't, we can't just fight them. The issues they bring up that are like men's issues, they're often quite, they, they are valid issues. They are things that happen and they are problems, 100%. And we can't sit there and argue and tell them that they're not problems because then they're gonna feel invalidated and then they're gonna be angry and then they're gonna say that feminists hate men, which just isn't true. Men's issues are women's issues. And we, and that's just the way it is. Men's issues are women's issues and we do need to acknowledge them However, men's issues are patriarchal issues and they all stem from the oppression of women and the idea that women are housekeepers and they have to be feminine and masculinity is strength and men have to work and men have all this pressure put upon them to be strong, to be the primary worker who makes the money for the family they're not allowed to be weak. They aren't allowed to be vulnerable. They have to look after everyone. That's a problem. But those rules, although women will put that pressure onto men a lot of the time, the, the rules have been created by the system that we live in, by the society that we live in. And that's a problem and we need to change that. And that is what we're trying to change. When you respond to men, ignorant men, in a calm fashion with facts and statistics and agreement, they aren't prepared for it. What they have, they often don't have facts. They don't have arguments, but they're ready, they're ready to yell at you. They expect you to just hit them with disagreement and yell at them and tell them that they're wrong. And to that, they are then able to go make their own videos and their own posts and say women hate men women are telling men that our issues don't matter women blah, 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 blah. we can't give them that we can't give them that because they're just not going to listen to us if we're just attacking them they aren't going to listen we need to make our feminist advocacy so that men will listen yes we need to empower women but we also need to validate men which seems so annoying it's always about men right but they're not ready <laughs> for us to just you know like if we if we come straight in and like take away their privileges they're gonna get real pressed and they're gonna get real mad and no it's not fair however they are still in charge and unfortunately we do have to cater for them somewhat because at the end of the day, they're the ones who are going to change the rules. And it's not fair. And it's shit. But if we attack them, they're going to attack us back. And all that does is hurt women further. We have to be logical and we have to be smart and we have to be respectful. Because otherwise they aren't going to listen. And it's terrible. <laughs> the other one is I often see, you know, there's this whole thing now with calling men wallets or toolboxes. And I understand that that's a response to them calling us dishwashers and for objectifying us for so long. But we can't, we can't be down at their level. If we respond, it's, it's bait. They're just baiting us. If we just respond to them with the, the way they treat us, it, it's just a cycle. It's just a cycle and it doesn't change or fix anything. A lot of men will come onto my post and say, will you call men wallets? And I can honestly say, no, I have never once, I've never once objectified anyone. I don't think anyone deserves to be objectified. And I understand the purpose of it is so men understand how it feels, but they're not gonna understand that. They're never going to understand that. And they just see it as a way to retaliate. And it's like, well, you called me an object, so I'm allowed to call you an object. And I know that that's not rational and I know that's not how it works, but they live in a bubble and that's how they see it. And we can't play into their hand. We can't take the bait. We can't, we can't. They just constantly try to catch us out and to trap us. And I refuse, I refuse to let them have that on me. 
I will not snoop down to their level and I don't think any of us should be. We need to prove that we are mature and we have an actual argument. Hitting back at them by objectifying them just shows, it just says we don't have an actual argument. When someone just comes at me and I'll make a valid point and they're just like, shut up dishwasher. All that says to me, they don't have a valid point. They feel attacked and the only way they know how to respond is to objectify me because they wanna upset me. They wanna make me angry. And they want to be able to say, look, feminists are irrational. I made a joke and she got angry at me. Ha ha ha. Can't give them that. <laughs> if that happens and you say something and they just respond with shut up dishwasher, it's just, why? You ask them why. Say, what did I say that requires me to shut up? Why are you offended by this? What upsets you? And if they don't have a response, it's because they can't disagree with you. And if they can't disagree with you, they're just proving your point. So if you hit them with something like that and some sort of logical sort of satirical response, it kind of throws them, they aren't expecting it. They're expecting you to yell at them and call them a toolbox. And then they're like, ha ha, you objectified me too, ha 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 ha. Why is it fair if you can and I can't? Which obviously there are obvious reasons to that. Men can't be oppressed. They're at the top, but they're not, they don't care. They don't care. They, they don't understand. They never will. It's all a game to them. And we, you just got to play tactfully. When men say something like men get abused more or women get paid more or are more likely to be hired for jobs, which I've had both of those things said to me, which is just so much bullshit. Hit them with statistics. And if they don't like your statistics and say that they're not true, ask them for their sources. Because 99% of the time, they don't have any sources. Uh, they'll often ask for your sources and you can give them to them. Go to a website that's like a .org because they're a lot harder to argue with. Uh, so if they ask for a source, have a source ready. Always have a source ready for statistics and things. Most of the time, they're not gonna have one. I had one this morning where Someone said something about how women are trying to stop men from getting help for abuse and thus, you know, that's not fair. And so I just responded, I was like, yeah, if that is true, that is totally unfair and I do not agree with that at all. Men need help for abuse too. And I asked for his source for it and he never responded to me. I Googled it and I couldn't find anything on it anywhere. So I asked him where he got his information from and he just never replied. So... <laughs> Can't argue with facts. Can't argue with numbers. Always ask for sources. If they start giving you numbers, ask where they got them from. It's really easy to find good sources. Google is free. And so it's not that hard. When men make a, like a misogynistic sexist joke, just ask them to explain what's funny. I've noticed a lot of them just say it's dark humor and just say what's funny about it. Just ask them what specifically, what are you laughing at? See what they say, because I've so far just had responses like, it's just funny. And I'm like, why? And then they just can't respond because there's nothing actually funny about it. They just like laughing at women's oppression, which just isn't funny. You see like rape jokes and things and they're like, ha 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 ha. And you're like, what's funny? And they're like dark humor. I'm like, this is something that is very real and it happens daily. And I understand that a lot of people understand that it's not serious and it's just a joke. But because of how frequently it happens, there are people who are seeing this who don't see it as a joke and they think it's normal behavior and they're gonna use it to justify what they're doing. Like if, if it's not obviously a joke and someone says something without like satire or without being over the top exaggerating and making it very clear that it's a joke, there are going to be people who take it seriously, 100%. I've seen a few of these where like, you know, people will joke about filming their girlfriends unknowingly and uploading it to Pornhub. And people are laughing at it, but it's like one of the most viewed categories on Pornhub is filmed without her knowledge. And that's a big issue. And it happens so often and you know, you know that people who are seeing that don't see a problem with it. And they think it's funny because they don't see it as a problem. They think it is actually funny to do that. They think it's okay and they think it's funny. And just saying it 
as a joke, is telling these people that, hey, it's okay, it's funny, it's normal, and it desensitizes it, and it makes it not look like a serious issue. And I understand that a lot of people know that that's not okay, but the fact that it's one of the most viewed categories on Pornhub shows you that there is a lot of people who genuinely don't see it as a problem. And that's why you can't joke about that sort of thing. And if you say that to them, how are they going to argue that without sounding like an absolute terrible person? They can't. They, they cannot debate that. You can say it's a joke, but you've just told them exactly why it isn't funny and why it's not okay. And that goes with a lot of sexist jokes. If you just explain to someone calmly, they can't yell at you. If you are giving valid points in a calm manner, they can't just scream at you, especially if you're being completely valid. A lot of the arguments that they have are just being angry and telling you you're wrong without giving you an explanation as to why. And you often see a lot of people yelling at feminists and having feminists yelling back, both just screaming, I'm right, no, I'm right, no, I'm right, no, I'm right. And no one gets anywhere. You have to validate each other. I understand they're not going to validate me, but I will validate their points as I'm talking about what the issue is. And then they don't feel attacked. If they don't feel attacked, they're not going to attack you. And if they do, then they're just, terrible. <laughs> just a bad person, completely proving your point. Take the power into your own hands. Don't let them hurt you or invalidate you. Hit them with hard facts in a calm way. And most of the time they won't know how to respond. They kind of have to agree with you or ignore you. All the experiences I've had where I've spoken calmly and justified my points, they usually will give up and stop replying because they don't want to admit that you're right, but they also can't say that you're wrong. <laughs> or they, less often, they'll say you're right and apologize and tell you to have a good day. I've had that a few times. Uh, although the first where they just realize they don't have an argument against you, that's much more common. But just as effective. It's just as nice to have people stop yelling at you because they realize that they're wrong and they, they want to be angry and they want to yell at you, but you don't give them a reason to yell at you. And I understand how infuriating it is and how angry we are. I'm so angry and I will sometimes lose it and I will yell at these people and all they do is yell at me back. It never gets me anywhere. Having a screaming match with an ignorant man, will never get you anywhere. They're not, it's just, it's not, it's not gonna work. They'll either run out of ways to fight you or they will insult your appearance. <laughs> and when they insult your appearance, just say, how, how does how I look negate my point? All you're doing is proving you don't have an argument. Now, I often get like, I, I can't take someone seriously who has rainbow hair. I'm like, okay, that's just proving that you're immature. All you're doing is proving you don't have a point. When you bring in things that have nothing to do with the argument, you are just saying you don't have an argument. Effectively, that is all you're doing. And that comes to, I see a lot of people picking on people for their grammar. And I see that on both sides. And like, when you just call someone out for their grammar, you are not helping anyone. You aren't helping your side. You don't know people, some people have learning disabilities. You don't know what their first language is. You don't know their circumstances. They might not have been able to get an education. Like you can't judge that. Calling someone out on their grammar does not help your argument in any way. Like don't, don't do that. It's, it's so stupid. And if someone calls you out on your appearance, don't retaliate by calling them out on theirs either. It's so easy to just like hit them with exactly what they do to you, but it's it's unhelpful. It doesn't help anyone get anywhere. It just turns into a stupid argument about nothing where everyone's just angry at everything and you're not fighting for anything anymore. You're just fighting for the sake of it. And that's not the point. Men have privilege and we want men to be fighting for our, what we're fighting for and on our side because men are gonna listen to men, right? So unfortunately we have to we have to appeal to the male audience as well because we need their privilege is helpful to us. If we have more men understanding why we're fighting and on our side and speaking with us, more men will listen because unfortunately men are listened to 
much more. By women as well, we all have our internalized misogyny and I know that there are a lot of women who will listen to men over other women. It's so stupid and it's that like act like a lady bullshit, right? It's so dumb. <laughs> we shouldn't have to cater to men. Uh, and I don't want us to cater to men. We don't want to put aside our argument just for men's sake. We want to say everything we want to say, but we have to be respectful of everyone in these instances, you know? If we disrespect, if we're being disrespectful towards men, they're going to use that against us and we're going to get more and more of those fucking accounts saying that feminists disrespect men, we don't want equality, we only care about women, women want superiority, blah, blah, blah. we're gonna just get more of that and I don't want more of that. I want, I want men to understand that we're trying to help them as well as us. We're trying to help everyone, we're trying to get equality and by just yelling and never acknowledging what they're talking about, they're never going to listen to us have to be inclusive in our arguments. Which is why whenever I talk about something like consent or whatever, I never mention gender because I know I'm just gonna get people commenting saying, this happens to men too, you don't actually care about men. I'm like, okay, I won't mention a gender at all. I'll say it's an issue, I'll say it's a problem. And then I will make other videos where I talk about statistics and acknowledge something like, this happens to this many women, this happens to this many men. So yes, it's an issue for both. The reason we have more resources for women is because blank. The reason women feel this way is because blank. The reason men go through this is because blank. You have to acknowledge everyone and not give them any reason to attack you. If you take away any argument that they have against you, they can't attack you, can they? It's like anytime I talk about men and the abuse they face or whatever, magically, I don't get any men commenting on my posts. They don't seem to care when I talk about them. They only care when I talk about women because it's not about them. And that in itself sort of proves a point. So if they comment saying something like, you don't care about men, I'll just tag them in a video where I've talked about men. I'm like, there you go. Just when men say they have it harder, ask them, ask them to give examples and then, you know, counter that by saying why those issues exist and that you care about those issues too. It's just not what we're talking about right now. But they're free to make their own video and you'll back it up completely. I've already said that, but I want to reinforce it because I think that's the best way to debate that. So effectively, I suppose the overall point is that a lot of these misogynistic men expect you to fight. They expect you to yell at them and belittle them and tell them that they don't matter. And I know that's not what we're saying, but that's how they interpret it. And they want to use that to disarm you. They want to use that to, you know, negate the whole feminist agenda. They want to use that against us and say that women hate men. We can't give them the power to be able to do that. By being calm and respectful and validating their points and telling them that they're right or responding with yes or not getting offended by what they say, we aren't giving them the power that's taking away from them. They expect us all to, to act irrationally. And if we don't, if we don't act how, if we don't react how they expect us to, it completely, they don't know how to respond. They're expecting a fight. If you don't fight, they don't, they lose their argument because they don't actually have any valid points. Most of the time, they don't have valid points. They don't have statistics. They don't have sources. They just have stuff they've seen on Twitter. <laughs> And that's not valid, but they will still scream it at you and you'll scream stuff back, but no one's listening to each other. You explain something calmly. They, they don't have any points. All they have is things to yell at you. If they can't yell at you, they don't have anything. So don't give men the power to, to yell at you. Don't fight fire with fire. Don't snoop down to their level, unfortunately. I want to say I hate men as much as the next person because obviously I don't hate all men. I hate the enforced toxic masculinity and the way that a large number of men act out and the way that we as women get treated so regularly and there are so many valid points for feminism and men have never been oppressed and they never will be. That's the whole point. They don't understand. They think what we're doing is oppressing them. They think that's what it means. They think that we're treating them poorly. They, because they've never experienced what we go through. They're not used to not having their way. They're not used to people yelling at them and telling them that they're wrong for their 
they're not used to it. So they're going to feel attacked. So you have to validate them in order for them to listen to you. And I, I want them to listen to me. I want them to understand what I'm saying. And I want them to understand that I don't hate every single man. I just want to be treated equally. I don't want, I don't want to cancel femininity like a lot of people seem to think I do. I'm not encouraging everyone to be more masculine, take up male, male roles. I want it to be okay for men to take up female roles. I want it to be okay for men to be emotional and be feminine and be vulnerable. And I want it to be okay for women to not have families and not be primary caregivers. I, I want everyone to be treated the same. And I want men to understand that and listen to me when I say that, because that's what, that's what a lot of them want to. I hope we at least can get through to some people, but at the very least we can stop having screaming matches and hopefully get through to some men and at least disarm their arguments <laughs> because I would like to see just men not be able to fight us and not be able to come up with all these dumb, this dumb logic that they have. I would like to see them struggle to fight us. Imagine, imagine, imagine men not being able to fight feminist logic uh, or not seeing them do it because they already look stupid. They already don't really know what they're talking about. We all know that, but they think they're right and they think they have valid points. So we tell them they're valid and then give them why our reasons are valid. What reason do they have to invalidate us? You know, it's quite good. It's quite great to see these men flounder and struggle to respond to you because all it does is enforces the idea that you're right whether they agree with you or not or whether they'll openly agree with you or not it kind of shows that they don't have an argument and that they're wrong and that's satisfying in itself and that shows a lot of people who might be on the fence that that's the case because there are a lot of people sort of who just feel attacked by feminism because they are more feminine men or something and they they kind of are like feel like they're misrepresented and they're like not all men are like that because you know I'm feminine and I have these issues and I've men you know you want to validate those people and sort of tell them that you don't have an issue with femininity and that that is a feminist issue and that you are fighting for them and although you aren't going to get through to you know Trump supporters you will get through to some people who don't disagree with what they're saying. I've managed to talk to a few people who feel attacked by feminism and sort of explain to them calmly and they would, they'll generally, they'll generally listen and understand. It is annoying that we have to, you know, put aside our anger and things. It seems so stupid, but it is effective a lot of the time. I hope this has been helpful. Um, I know a lot of it's kind of upsetting in the way that, you know, I'm, I, I just, I just want men to listen. I want as many people in this fight as we can. If we are out here just yelling at men and invalidating everything they say, they aren't going to listen to us, which is shit because I'm angry. I'm really fucking angry. And there are a lot of people that I just, I just want, I just want to scream because like, you know, these people don't understand and we're being invalidated ourselves and it feels counterintuitive to validate people who are invalidating us. But we have to be the bigger people and if we validate them, then hopefully they validate us in return and we can develop a mutual respect. I hope this made sense. Um, <laughs> I hope you've learned something and I hope that we're able to disarm more misogynistic men in the comment section. I hope that we are able to explain and get more men to respect and understand our cause. And I hope that more people realize that we are here for equality and not women's superiority, which is ridiculous, but <sighs> they, <laughs> they have a lot of invalid, they do have a lot of invalid arguments. People who are defensive don't listen. That's just the way it goes. And I want them to listen. So that's sort of the point of this video. I, I'm angry too. I'm so angry 
at this whole thing and the fact that this happens and I get so angry at all the comments that I get and I have to calm down. I have to validate them because I know if they're defensive, they aren't going to listen to me and I want them to listen to me. I think what I have to say is important. I think this movement is so important and I want as many people on this side as we can get because I want to see change. I hope that everyone is having as much fun in isolation as they can be. I know we have a lot of time, so let's use this time to talk about things that matter and talk about things that are important. Use this advice, I suppose, to try to talk to ignorant people and get them to understand. I just want the world to be better. I want everyone to respect and appreciate each other and I want everyone to be equal. I hope you learned something. Um, we're all in this together. Let's never stop fighting. Please stay safe. Please stay home. Please check up on your friends, your family, your loved ones. Make sure everyone is okay. I hope that you are okay. And I will see you on Friday for my next video. Oh no, I'll see you on Wednesday with Mine and Cat's podcast. I will leave the channel link in the description. <laughs> and then after that, I'll see you on Friday and then again Monday, you know? Three times a week you'll see me, plus on TikTok. Wow, you must be sick of my face. <laughs> uh, enjoy the rest of your day. I'll see you soon. I love you. Mwah.